Hi folks, thanks for joining me and we are talking about the most exciting message in the world and it's what the cross accomplished and we've talked about fabulous timeless truths it's what took place at the cross of Jesus on the cross in Christ himself what was the purpose of Jesus first coming what will be the reason for his second coming and folks in these uncharted and uncertain times that we're living in tremendous uncertainty upon this country the United Kingdom tremendous uh, fear and lack of hope and lack of certainty folks you will only find certainty and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ so what is the seventh thing the cross accomplished this makes me so happy inside talking about this because this is what it's all about Christianity is not about rules and regulations and ceremonies and forms. They're just the trappings of the traditions of men and churches, denominations, etc. But let's strip it right back to the core. Let's get back to where Jesus started the whole thing. Let's get back to where everyone understood the purpose for them being born again. And Jesus communicated something when he met his disciples after his resurrection. He taught them these amazing truths. Their hearts and minds were opened. And the seventh thing the cross accomplished was redemption. Come on, you know what I'm going to say. Get your Bible. Okay then, this is Romans 3 verse 24. Romans 3 24. All are justified and made righteous. The missing message in the church, the righteousness of God in Christ. The missing message in the church. You are made the righteousness of God in Christ as though you have never ever sinned. Wow. You wouldn't have so many people queuing at the front, would you, to confess their sins if they understood these truths. In actual fact, most of the pastors would be redundant and they could uh, get on with the, the real stuff. Here it is, Romans 3.24, all are justified and made upright in right standing with God. No more condemnation. How many Christians do you know walk in condemnation? They don't understand the truths of God in Christ. My church is brought up on this. They're brought up on this. We don't have folks queuing the front anymore and saying, oh, you know, God forgive me, I've done this. They know how to walk and live in the righteousness that God has given to them. They know how to. Here it is, freely walking in him by his grace, his unmerited favour, through the redemption. Here it is, through the redemption that there is in Christ Jesus. The seventh thing the cross accomplished was redemption. Ransom is why there is a payment for sin. Redemption is how the sin was paid for. What do you mean sin? When Adam sinned, he sinned for us all. He was the first man. He was given power of attorney over the estates of God, dominion over creation and time. Very interesting. Because when Adam sinned, Satan had time. He had certain ages and he had certain time. And when Christ came, he stopped the time of the activity of the devil. He took away his authority. So why isn't that happening in church, Mike? Well, you have to walk in those truths. Anyway, back to redemption, because I'm digressing. Redemption. What is redemption? Ransom is payment. Redemption is how it's paid for. Literally, the scripture talks about very, very clearly, the life is in the blood. Redemption is through the blood of Jesus Christ. When we talk about the blood of Christ, it'll blow you away. It's also the payment that releases slaves from enslavement. Spirit, soul, mind, body, death, and an eternity of separation from God. Payment to whom? To a just and holy God. Now, ransom and redemption are kind of intertwined, so let me say it again. When Adam sinned, he didn't sin only against himself, against his wife, against creation. He sinned primarily against a holy and just God. When a Christian sins, they sin against themselves, their wife, their husband, their children, if they have any, the church, and primarily against 
the Godhead themselves. That's why sin has to be paid for. Now then, redemption. God required man to pay for sin. God is love. And he knew Adam could not pay for that sin, what he had committed. So he slew an animal, which is a type of Christ. He clothed them in coats of skins. He covered the sin. He could not remove the sin nature from Adam until he came in flesh and blood and he could pay for the sin debt with sinless blood. Not sinful blood, sinless blood. This is so important, folks. Because when Christ was made sin, death and a curse, he could raise himself from the dead, not because he was made sin, death and a curse, and he could just do that, but because he was our sin substitute, not a substitute sinner. Big difference. And he could legitimately pay for the sins of the world. And in paying to his father the sins of the world, his father said, job done. When Jesus said, tell a testimony upon the cross, it is finished, it means this, paid in full. So God the Father could not hold Jesus in Hades. That's why David said by revelation of the Holy Ghost that death could not hold him. It could not hold him. You will not leave my soul in Hades. Why? Because the payment was accepted. So redemption... The seventh thing the cross accomplished was this. It is the currency of the blood of Jesus that has paid my sin debt, your sin debt, and the sin debt of the world, even though they don't know it. So does that mean then, Mike, the world will all get to heaven? Oh no, you have to confess Christ, that he is the only sacrifice for sin that the world themselves can accept and confess. So this great truth regarding redemption is something, bury it in your spirit, bury it in your heart, because it will totally change your life when it sinks in. And don't be a slave to sin. You don't have to. You don't owe the devil anything, you don't owe the flesh anything, and you don't owe the world anything. But you owe God everything. You owe him everything, folks. So live before the Lord and let him own you. God bless you. Hope you're really enjoying this.